now let's quickly jump into Ether channels. Well, what is an Ether channel? It's a link aggregation mechanism. Meaning, if you take a couple of links and we bundle them together, we call that an Ether channel. And why is that? Why do we need an Ether channel? Well, in a typical spanning tree network, if you think about it, guys, spanning tree is very inefficient. If there are two switches that are connected with four links in between, what's going to end up happening is spanning tree is going to block how many links to avoid loops. It's going to block three links. It's only going to leave one link up while the other three links are going to be blocked. And the total bandwidth that we'll use is going to be 100 megabits per second, assuming these are all fast Ethernet interfaces. But in reality, we have the ability, we have four 100 meg links. We have 400 meg worth of capacity available to us, but it's a shame that STP is only allowing us to use 100 meg. So with, with Ether channel, what we end up doing is that we kind of bundle all the links together. We aggregate them together and we're able to utilize full throughput capacity of that link. And even though physically there's still four separate ports, but through a configuration, we can make them logically appear as if it's one big pipe or one big link with a lot more capacity and it's very very powerful in real world ether channels are utilized quite heavily in the data center realm also at the server farm level very heavily utilized all right now let's quickly talk about the different ether channel negotiation protocols when it comes to ether channel there are two protocols first PACP stands for port aggregation protocol it's Cisco proprietary port modes that are available in PACP are auto that's a passive mode if both sides are set to auto the link will never become an ether channel desirable this is an active mode link actively tries to become an ether channel and the third is on this mode forces the link to become ether channel and kills auto negotiation the next one up is called lacp this is the industry standard stands for link aggregation control protocol it's defined in ieee standard 802.3 ad port modes in this are passive active and on as you can see there's they correspond exactly to the pack b now PACP is a Cisco proprietary protocol. You might be asking a question. Why do we have, why do we always have these competing standards with Cisco, like CDP and then LLDP, PACP and LACP? Well, what ends up happening is C Cisco is a thought leader in the industry, right? So they're the industry leaders in networking. They're the ones that typically come up with an idea first. And then a couple of years later, the industry catches up and the other companies express interest in deploying that piece of technology on their networking equipment. So then they come up with an open industry standard. And that's why you see all these competing standards against Cisco to be able to allow non-Cisco devices to work in a friendly manner with Cisco devices. Basically, the whole idea is to create this ecosystem in the industry so the users are not locked down to certain vendors. So it creates, it fosters a better business environment for different networking vendors. That's the whole idea. Another important thing I want you guys to keep in mind is, let's say if you have a server, this right here is a web server, and you have two NIC cards inside of the server. Both are 10 gigabit ethernet cards. And then you have a switch that has these two 10 gig links pl plugged into two different 10 gig ports on the switch. Well, if you didn't use Ether channel, if you let spanning tree do its thing, it's gonna kill one of the links, right? It's gonna block, and which means we can only utilize 10 gig worth of capacity. But with the magic 
of ether channel you can combine these two by the way this right here is a symbol of ether channel so wherever you see in network diagrams a sort of like a circle drawn over the links between two devices this right here is a symbol of ether channel so when we enable ether channel on our switch and by the way on the server we would also have to enable an ether channel using lacp remember server depending on the server, you're going to have to enable LACP, Link Aggregation Control Protocol. So assuming you have LACP enabled on the server itself and LACP is enabled on the switch and they're in the appropriate you know, groups and all that, and we'll talk about the configuration in a moment, all of a sudden we can now utilize a full 20 gig worth of capacity between that switch and the server. So that's a very beautiful thing. And, and you can imagine why it's such a powerful technology when it comes to data center networking. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.